If you have your Bible, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. We have started a collection of talks entitled Room, this idea of making room uh, for God throughout different areas of your life. And, and so uh, Matthew chapter 1, verse 18 through 21, it says this. This is how Jesus the Messiah was born. His mother Mary was engaged to be married to Joseph. But before the marriage took place, while she was still a virgin, she became pregnant through the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 19. Joseph, Joseph to him was engaged. Joseph to whom? Yes, that's what it says. Joseph to whom she was engaged was a righteous man and did not want to disgrace her publicly. So he decided to break the engagement quietly. As he considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, son of David, the angel said, Do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. And she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This morning, I want to talk to you from the subject, making room in your misery, or making room in your disappointment. You can choose your own adventure here at Discovery. I'm going to pray and then we'll get started. Father, we thank you for today. Lord, we thank you for what you're already doing. God, we thank you for the season that we're in, for what it represents, God. And, and so we just, we pray today, God, that you would uh, just have your way in our life, in our heart, and in our minds. God, we thank you for what you're doing. God, we pray that we would leave here changed, that we would leave here better, but not for our own benefit, but so that we can change the world around us. God, we thank you. We love you in Jesus' name. Everyone say it. Amen. Amen. I'll drink to that. So uh, my wife and I, we are notoriously, um, it has been well documented that we are not, we, we don't believe in throwing our kids a birthday party. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Um, <laughs> like, that's not our thing. Like, we try so hard to not, to not throw our kids a birthday party. And it's not because we're evil parents. Like, we love our kids. But what we realize, especially when they're younger, let's be honest, you're throwing a party for you, not for them. They don't remember a thing. They're two years old. They don't remember a thing. And so we're like, well, you know what? Let's not throw them a party. Maybe, maybe we can like go somewhere as a family and just, and so we try hard to not, to not have birthday parties for our kids. Well, unfortunately, my youngest last year said, mom, dad, I want to have a party. And we said, are you sure? He said, yes, I'm sure. And so he wanted a Sonic themed party. And so we, we, went, we went all out. We, we got him sonic streamers, and we hung him all through the ceiling. We got a sonic plates and sonic napkins, and it, we just we went all out. Sonic, sonic, sonic. But one thing we purchased that he really, really loved was a four-foot sonic balloon. <laughs> and when he saw that thing, he just went crazy. He ran up to it. He hugged it. He stood next to it. He said, take a picture with me next to it. Like, he loved the Sonic. And, uh, and so, 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 so we hear, here's this Sonic that he loved and he adored. But as you know, balloons don't last forever. And so what my son didn't realize is that every day that Sonic was there, a little bit of air was <laughs> till all of a sudden, one day he woke up and Sonic was no more. Sonic was lying on the floor deflated. He was, he was just there, and my son woke up waiting to, to give Sonic a good morning hug, <laughs> only to discover Sonic was dead. <laughs> and uh, the reason why I'm telling you this is not to make you sad, but, but I think that if, if, we, if we really look at this, this idea uh, of, of, of my son, of, of the excitement, but then all of a sudden the disappointment, I think a lot of us can relate to this idea of having something that was once a source of happiness all of a sudden be a source of letdown. All of a sudden become a source of disappointment. 
all of a sudden becoming something that, that was once there that brought joy to your life. Now all of a sudden <sighs> makes you sad. See, I think if, if we were honest this morning, we would say that life is a lot like this balloon. That, that each and every one of us in this room, that we can relate to this idea of a deflated hope, deflated dreams, deflated fill in the blanks. See, for some of you this morning, you, 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 you had found a source of, of happiness in maybe a relationship. Or maybe it was in a career and, and that, that one thing that, that was just, it brought you so much joy and so much happiness. All of a sudden, that relationship ended. That career took a pause. That business had to shut down. And all of a sudden, we're left standing here with the deflated sonic balloon. And so, so here, here's, here's my, my, my questioning this morning. If, if you can relate to this idea, if you've ever experienced this, this idea of, 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 of disappointment or misery or letdown, like how do, we, how do we posture ourselves in the midst of something like this? I actually want to submit to you this morning that, that how the, the mindset, excuse me, the mindset that you have in a season of disappointment is everything. The posture of how you carry yourself in the moments of disappointment is everything. And, and, and so this morning, my, my, my heart is, is, is to encourage you to make room in your disappointment. Make room in your misery. Make room in your letdown. See, I, I, was, I was reading, as we read the story in Matthew chapter 1, he, here's what I find fascinating, is that the very Christmas story, the very thing that we find hope in, was first founded with disappointment. If you don't believe me, we can read the text again. See, here's Mary and Joseph that... They, they, they were betrothed. They, like, this is like an engagement on steroids. It's like a legal binding thing back in this, in this day where, where, like, it was legal binding. They, they, were, they were ready to be married. And then all of a sudden, as we read in the text, an angel appears to Mary and is like, hey, Mary, you're going to have a baby. And Mary's like, there's one problem. The angel's like, what? She's like, I'm a virgin. No worries. God has it under control. And so the angel leaves Mary. Then the, the angel goes to Joseph. Now, I'm sure Mary at some point was like, this is, this is crazy. Like, I'm pregnant now? But, but if it's one thing for Mary to be disappointed, but she actually knew what the angel told her. And she knew that she's never done anything to be pregnant. It's a whole nother story to tell Joseph. <laughs> and so, so here's Joseph and he's doing his thing. He's excited because he's about to get married to his girl of his, of his dreams. And an angel's like... And he's like, Joseph, I got news. Joseph's like, cool, what's up? Uh, your, 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 your fiance, Mary? Yeah, she's, she's a looker, yeah. Uh, he, the angel's like, uh, she's pregnant, peace, and then disappears. And I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. Like, what if he did though? Um, and so, and so, so that, so, like, he appears to Joseph. He's like, "Your girl's pregnant." <laughs> Joseph's like, "What?" But don't worry. 
It's God's. What does that mean? <laughs> like, could you imagine what's going through Joseph's head? That this one, this, this moment, this source of happiness between him and Mary, like all of a sudden becomes a source of disappointment. If you don't believe me, think about when you were engaged and your, and your fiance came up to you and said, hey, I'm pregnant, but it's God's. You'd be like, no, it's not. You would freak out. And this is the exact same thing with Joseph, I believe, that Joseph was like, what is happening? All of a sudden, it felt like his life was crumbling. The very thing that he was looking forward to has now become a source of disappointment. And Joseph, verse 18 and 19, it says that Joseph began to plot and to plan on how to quietly end his marriage. What would be his marriage? And so in verse 18 and 19, it says that Joseph, he, he was thinking, okay, you know what? This is crazy. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna end this quietly so that people don't look down on her. People won't look down on me. And this is his plan. And I began thinking, like when, when you are in your moment of disappointment, when you are in your season of despair, when you are in your moments of misery, isn't it so easy to Joseph things? Here's what I mean. Try to fix them on your own strength. It is so easy to be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do to make sure that this works or, or to make sure that I can still keep this and, and to make sure that this doesn't happen. Like we get so busy trying to fix things. And, uh, and in the, the, those, those moments of trying to fix things, we, we think we're doing something. But can I submit to you this morning that, that you might actually be doing more damage than than good. See, because when I try to fix things in my own strength, I end up occupying valuable space that, that takes up for where the Holy Spirit could be working. And not only do I occupy valuable space, but a lot of the times, I end up prolonging everything. See, Joseph was like, hey, I'm going to end this marriage, but that wasn't God's plan. As we're about to find out, God is like, no, you don't, don't end it, stay with it. And, and so, so, so a lot of the times when I try to fix things in my own strength, like it just makes things worse. Because it begins to prolong things. I think of Israel and their journey from Egypt to the promised land. A journey that should have taken days, took years. Why? Because they were trying to fix things in their own strength. They were trying to make it work based off of what they understood the situation to be. And so what, 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 I, what I'm trying to get at is when I'm in my season of disappointment, the longer that I prolong, the, 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 the more that I try to fix things, the more I prolong the season. And, and so this, the season of, of discouragement, all of a sudden, I, it, 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 it dwindles down because it's, it's prolonged. It's, it's taking such a long time. Like I'm in this, this rut. I'm in this, this place of like despair. And if I'm in there long enough, This, the season of discouragement easily becomes a season of death. I don't necessarily mean a physical death, but emotionally. 
emotionally, all of a sudden, those things that I was hoping for, like, they just die. Pretty soon I can't see anything because all I can think about is what I'm dealing with. And I give up hope. And I give up, and, 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 and I'm in this, this place. Can anyone relate to this, this season? And if I'm not careful, the season of discouragement will be delayed and prolonged because I'm trying to fix things. So all of a sudden, like, I just lose all hope. I, I lose all, like, and then all, what, what, what tends to happen is that things die, my, like, different emotions, they begin to die, my, my ability to hope dies, but, but here's the one thing that I want to, that I want to bring to your attention this morning that, that dies the longer that I prolong, and it's this, my dreams. My dreams die in seasons of despair. And this morning, if you're here and you've, you've had, you're, you're in a season of disappointment and you've been trying to fix it in your own strength, like if you were honest, you would say, John, you know what? Like, I really feel like my dreams are dying. Like the things that I was dreaming about are dying. Maybe some of you, you're like, I've been trying to fix things so long that they're not dying, they're dead. And this morning, if that's you, I want to encourage you that in your season of disappointments, in your season of misery, in your seasons of despair, that if you can, can, can allow to make room in this season for God, that he wants, to, he wants to reignite your dreams even in the midst of the season of disappointment. See, here's Joseph, verse 20 of, of Matthew chapter 1. Jo it says that Joseph, he's considering the things. He's, he's trying to make plans. He's trying to fix the situation. Like if I end this, this marriage, then, then everything will be okay. He's trying to fix things. But if you read verse 20, it's very interesting because it says, it says Joseph, he's considering these things, considering divorcing Mary quietly. He's considering these things. And then it's almost as if like there's this, 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 this moment where, where, where Joseph is like, I think I just need to lie down. Because it says as he was considering these things, he had a dream. Now he, here's what I know. That in order for me to have a dream, I got to be able to rest. And if I'm going to rest, that means I'm just, I'm not moving around. I'm not trying to figure things out. It's like me just. And so could it be that in your season of disappointment, that, that, that what, what you really need is not to try and fix things and make things work, but what you really need is to make room to say, God, I'll give you this space in the midst of my disappointment. I'm giving you this space, and it allows me to say, God, you take it, I'm going to rest. And to wait on what you Want to do. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to wait. I'm not going to try to fix it. I'm going to give you room. I'm not going to try to force something. I'm going to give you room. I'm going to let you do what you want. You do it. I'm going to rest. And could it be that in the moment of rest, that's when God begins to let you dream again? That when, when you're willing to rest, that's the moment God's like, okay, thank you. 
See, because too many times I'm trying to fix things and God's like looking over my shoulder. He's like, you ready for me to help? Leave me alone. I got this. You're breathing down my neck. I need space. Maybe that's just me. But God's like, he's like, well, could, could it be that I just need to, in my, in my season of disappointment, I'm saying, God, I'm giving, I'm making room by me stepping back. Letting you handle, do what only you can do. I'm just going to be here and I'm going to wait for you. I love what the author of Isaiah 41 says. He writes this, that those who wait upon the Lord, those who rest, those who who aren't fidgeting and moving, but they're just like, I'm I'm just going to wait. That those who wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. It will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They shall walk and will not faint. Could it be that your season of dreaming is not with you continuously trying to move but learning to wait? Because in your season of waiting, what you thought was wasted, God is renewing your strength. God is renewing your ability to dream. God is renewing your ability to once again hope. And so Joseph, he's, he's here and the band can come up. Joseph, he's, he, he has this dream. And it's in this dream, it's in this dream that, that God begins to speak to Joseph. It's in the, 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 the moment when Joseph is, is lying down and and he's resting is the moment that Joseph begins to dream. See, this morning, I don't know each and every one of your story. Maybe you're, maybe you don't even, maybe you're not even a season of disappointment. Maybe life is perfect. Maybe, 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 maybe whatever you're going, maybe you're not going through anything. But for those of you that are going through something, What I'm asking you to do is to make room. Make room in the season. Make room in the heartache. Make room in the misery. Make room in the disappointment. Because God wants to do something. He he wants to reignite the dream. He wants to reignite that thing in your heart that has lied dormant that you thought was dead. But he's wanting you to rest and to wait so that he can once again allow you to dream. Now, as we transition into this next, this next se- like see, um, section of, of our legacy. He, here's why legacy is so important for us. Because legacy is all about dreams. Legacy, in our mind, in my mind, legacy is all about fueling the dream of what God wants to do. And so we have dreams that we would reach Sonoma State as a church. We have dreams that we would reach the high school and middle school of, 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 in our city as a church. And, and legacy is an opportunity for us to add to that. It allows us to dream but to put action. Well, John, I thought you said that we just wait. I thought you just said, John, that we just have to chill. We do. But here, here's, here is where a lot of us get, get tangled up. Is that the moment that God reignites the dream in our heart, we don't do anything with the dream. Here's what's interesting. In Matthew chapter 1 and verse 24, 
It says that Joseph, when Joseph woke up, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded. So Joseph, he had a season of rest. He allowed God to rekindle the dream. Then he woke up. Notice what it doesn't say he did. He didn't wake up. He didn't get the morning paper, get back into bed, hang out. He didn't go to the coffee, make a cup of coffee, get back to bed and be like, man, that was an amazing dream. It said that when he got up, he did what the angel said. And so we, we, we got to have a season where we're not trying to fix things, a season where we rest, a season where God begins to, to reignite the dreams and the hopes that he's placed inside of our heart. But the moment that he awakes us is the moment that we put action to that dream. It's the moment that we begin to walk out the very thing that he has allowed us to dream. And so legacy is that. Legacy allows us to dream, but also to put action to that dream.